So welcome to a Budget Model Railways Christmas video. Um, not a lot of work on the right layout and I've realised that over the years most of my layouts, well, my videos tend to be about the work I've done. And the really nice thing with this layout is recently I, I haven't been making model railways, I've been running trains. Which I think sometimes I've quite rightly been accused of forgetting. So I've just been enjoying running trains. So what I thought I'd do tonight is just do a video of some of my locos running. Now uh, I think in the last video I mentioned uh, that I was going to stop buying locos and um, that worked uh, really rather well because I've only bought five since I said that. Um, two of them to be fair for Christmas presents. I uh, went out to Classic Rail a couple of weeks ago and um, he got a, a huge collection of Lima diesels and uh, my good lady wife pointed out that Christmas was coming and she needed to get me something for Christmas and my father-in-law needed to get me something for Christmas so I've got a, a class 47 and a class 31 coming um, but obviously I can't have them yet because Father Christmas has got to deliver them so what have, I, what have I bought? well this is just wonderful this is the old mainline mogul yes it's noisy yes I know uh, it, they are noisy but when it comes around in a minute I'll stop it and um, we'll have a little look at the detail on it because it's, it's quite something um, and this came about, and I'll, I'll film it in a minute, because I was going through my, uh, my drawers of locomotives, as you can see, and I discovered that I had a mainline collet goods that I didn't know I had. So many locos I've got. And it was rather nice, so I went and bought a green, which I might show you in a minute, collet goods. And then I saw this one, which is the Mogul just look at that just look at the, the detail and finish on that for what is I believe a 30 year old model yeah I, I get they're noisy um, but they do run they, they run solidly um, but just look at the detail and, and the finish of that I mean I got this for 35 pound on eBay including postage there are a few bargains but you do have to look but I mean it's as new it's shiny I don't think I've got a shiny locomotive so that's been very successful uh, uh, and I'm quite pleased with that. That only arrived today. So that's not a new one. You've seen that before, but uh, I've had it out and running. And actually having given it a really good run, it's quite a nice runner. So this is one of the new ones. Um, and this was a, a bit of an experiment. I wanted to have a shop around and see what the cheapest new 040 is, is I could get and how they run. Um, I was a bit disappointed. There's lots of websites advertising 040s right down to 20, 25 pound. Yeah, none of them are in stock and they're all for old models that Hornby aren't going to bring in. So it's just a very crass way of getting you onto their websites. But this came from, of all places, WH Smiths online. Um, and it was 34.99 including postage. And it's a really nice runner. So we'll have a little shot of this running in a moment. So here we go, this is it running. Now it's a really rather nice looking loco with all the detail. Let's slow it right down there. And look how slow that'll run. That's even got just gone over a point at that pace. So these are good locos now for that money. Um, it shunts really well because you can just see it, it goes at a crawl over a point. Um, and that's even taking the wagons round the first radius turn. Um, now what I'm experimenting there with is some open wagons because I did a little bit of reading and I like box wagons but it transpires that most goods on the railways were carried by open wagons unless it needed to be inside it went in an open wagon so um, any scale models which you know I've used before produced some rather nice wagon loads and so I got some and painted them up but just look at that slow speed running. Just look at that slow speed running for a 35 pound loco on just a little DC controller. Um, and so really and truthfully, one of these newer ones now, uh, they are gonna do this one in Great Western livery next year. It was due out now, but it's obviously been delayed. That will be a wonderful little loco. You know, you'll probably get it for around just under the 40 pound mark discounted. And that loco will do anything you want. Um, I, I just think they're great, especially for that price. 
So there we go. That's one little life 4 -0. And this is the other little 040. So I've already got one of these. Um, I think these are the best looking and most useful of the ones they do. You've got all the brass trim there. Um, this is a, one of the newer ones. And so this is what Hornby are bringing out uh, next year. Um, that cost me £13 on eBay a couple of weeks ago, including postage. The interesting thing with eBay is it has got really silly, really, really silly. There are people trying to get 50, 60 pound for these when you can buy them new for 35. However, because there's so much, every so often one slips through. I've no idea why. It was almost brand new. It's a lovely looking little loco. So that's a little bit of a bargain. I couldn't resist it at that price. Neither could I resist those coaches. Um, I've been after those for a while since seeing somebody with them on Instagram. Yeah, I did have to pay about £10 each for them. Um, but what a wonderful colour scheme. Absolutely wonderful. Fits in with a little country railway so nicely as it comes down there through the, through the station. That's not a bad little view, is it? The thing is, I've found with this um, layout, because of all the little scenes, I end up just sitting down here watching trains go around. I did shunt the other evening for nearly an hour. Because of the kickback siding, um, you can really have some fun shunting. But I've explained this before, and I'm, but for the sake of just doing so again, the idea on these small layouts is to set different scenes. So you've got the cutting, you've got the bridge, you've got the station entrance with a level crossing and a signal box, you've got the platform, You've then got this end of the goods yard going past the wood and into the tunnel mouth under the village. And it just makes it more interesting as you're watching something go round. So that's um, another one of the nice little locos. And now we'll, uh, we'll have a little look at um, the two, uh, two collet goods that I got. Um, we just filmed this one coming down through here. That's quite a nice scene through the level crossing. Past the signal box of all the well-kept flowers. And down through the station. Nice little view of the coaches. So here we go, this is the mainline Collet Goods. Now, embarrassingly, I forgot I'd got this locomotive. I found it in one of the drawers. But this is actually a smooth, quiet one. Um, not anywhere near as noisy as the Mogul will pull a ridiculous amount of wagons right down to a crawl. Um, I had about 15 behind it the other day at more or less this pace. So I was really rather impressed with that, in all honesty. Um, you can actually hear how much quieter this is than the Mogul. So I had a couple of great evenings just running that round and it will shunt. Um, it even shunts across the points quite happily. So I was quite pleased with that. So I went out and bought a green one. And there we go, there's the green one. Now that is just a lovely colour screen, BR colour scheme. BR lime green. And again, much quieter than some of the other mainline stuff. So obviously they got something right on these collets that they didn't get right on the moguls and some of the others that I've got. Um, and again, these were just pull and pull and pull. I had five coaches around this the other day, which on the first radius curve, a lot of the locos simply won't do um, because of obviously the, the drag of trying to pull five coaches around the first radius. Yeah, these don't mind at all. I love the cutting. I know you can't quite see the loco and that's what I like, that it's just coming through in the distance. So there we go. And hopefully you get a sense of how, you know, the, the fact you've got all these little scenes as it runs round. And obviously you can turn it round and run it the other way. So that's what I've been doing, if I'm honest, for the last few weeks. He's going through my loco collection. Um, adding to my loco collection. <laughs> um, and running locos. Um, with lots of different consists. I'm getting, I've got a few more open wagon loads when the postman finally decides to deliver it and some nice coaches. There we go. And then we'll end in a moment with, uh, with a passenger service. 
I hope you've enjoyed just me rambling and you and watching some of the locos go around. I'm not making any great claims about the film. I'm sure the light and sound quality is altered as I've changed between shots. Um, it is possible to do a really slick video, but it takes forever because you have to do lots of different multiple cam camera shots, etc. Which we might do at some point when we get a moment. But there we go. So we'll finish in a moment with a, a bit of a passenger service. So here we go, a little bit of a passenger working. Behind that handsome loco. So there's been a little bit of a story behind this one. So a while ago I got this, got it in a part of a job lot. Rather nice sleeping car, which kind of matches those coaches that we've always had. We used to run on our exhibitions. And I thought it'd be nice to run a small sleeper service. I know it'd be bigger really, but it's a small layout. And so I had a little bit of hunt around and managed to get, never seen one anywhere else, but I managed to get this rather nice restaurant car. Again, it, it cost me 15, but in current prices, that's not bad. It is immaculate, little Hornby restaurant car. So we got a passenger coach, a restaurant car, a sleeper, and a brake van for the luggage, just like they did on the sleepers. So I've got a little sleeper train that can go behind a big express, thumping through my country station. It's not gonna stop at such a small halt, so it doesn't matter the platform's a bit short. There we go. Trying to pan a little bit. That's quite a nice little shot, isn't it? Shows the station off quite nicely. And I am pleased, as I've said before, the way the back scenes blend in by having things in front of them. Uh, and even the village then works quite nicely, um, blends in with the background. I have changed that actually, I put a different pub on. That came from John Winterbourne, um, my, my wife's friend's dad who passed away sadly, preferred it to the day pole one. Um, so there we go, a couple of things I have been using that I found very useful, again from John. Absolutely brilliant at getting bogey coaches onto track. If I'm shunting, old needle file with a large bent paper clip taped on it is all you need for uncoupling. And then uh, a little shot of <laughs> my loco collection. Yes, I do have too many locos. <laughs> um, and um, the fiddle yard that gets used in all sorts of different ways. Um, so I'm quite enjoying myself down here. I'm hoping to spend a bit of time down here over the Christmas period, just running trains. I will try and do a shunting video at some point. Um, they are a little bit more tricky, um, but I will try and do a shunting video. Now that just shows you a shot of the whole, whole layout. And it's having the lots of different scenes compressed in that makes it look bigger than it is. Um, it'd be very easy just to have one station along the front, one cutting along the back. But that wouldn't really then allow you that feel of a bigger size layout. Because it is at the end of the only five foot by two and a half foot, more or less. First radius, ballast mat, nice and simple. But I'm rather enjoying it. And I hope you are too. Um, I hope you're all enjoying watching it. And I hope it gives a little bit of incentive to people that you don't need a lot of room to do a layout. Um, you can still have fun on a smaller area. So we're just closing a bit of a close up of the locos. There we go. And through the station. And a very happy Christmas and a happy new year. I hope we all have as good a Christmas as we can under the difficult circumstances. And I'm sure we all hope that next year is better. So a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much for all the support, um, especially for our difficult times this year. Uh, and as I say, I hope you all have a really good Christmas and a happy new year. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series, click on the right for another video you might enjoy and please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment etc. Thanks again.